year, we say the same thing. Next summer will be better because, well, we're an optimistic bunch. But I have to say, summer 2017 looks pretty darn good. In fact, I'm so excited to tell you about some of these movies. Let's get started right away. Now, summer always officially begins with the first weekend of May. Hollywood keeps spilling over. They have so many tentpole films these days, but still, the official start of summer is the first weekend of May, and Marvel has that booked for quite some time. And this year, they've decided to honor Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 with that prestigious release date. And that means no more training wheels uh, for that property. Because when it started out, it was uh, the outside gamble in the first weekend of August. And now suddenly, it's kicking off the entire summer, which also means, though, that Kevin Feige expects it to perform. This is also a huge opportunity for James Gunn. Feige doesn't keep around a lot of directors. I mean, Joss Whedon was the, the, the previous uh, two-peter, uh, and then he imploded. But right now, the Russo brothers are out in front. Now it's uh, James Gunn's chance to, you know, make his mark on the MCU. And his only competition at this point is Peyton Reed. So I think he can beat him no problem. So that means just the Russo brothers are standing in his way of being, you know, the main Marvel director. And I think James Gunn's chances are pretty good considering how much people liked uh, his first volume. Uh, although I have to say with Baby Groot, how can he fail? Uh, now that has the whole weekend to itself, but Hollywood isn't giving it any breathing room as the very next weekend we have two big properties that at first glance seem to be in direct uh, you know, contrast to each other. Barbie versus Amy Schumer. However, with Di uh, Diablo Cody scripting that Barbie, Barbie movie, it could be more Amy Schumer than one would initially anticipate. But this Amy Schumer movie looks pretty good. Uh, Trainwreck was a very, it was nothing like, a, nothing of a train wreck at the box office, but it wasn't like one of the greatest movies of all time or anything like that. It wasn't, let's say, a bridesmaids, right? But this looks very promising. Uh, Amy Schumer is going to star, uh, and she has uh, Goldie Hawn starring in it as her mother. They play a mother-daughter who go on a trip together and I believe are kidnapped. Uh, but Ike Barinholtz also stars uh, as her brother, and that's pretty good casting. He looks like uh, Amy Schumer, and he looks like Goldie Hawn. And of course, he wowed everyone and I think stole the show in Suicide Squad. So I'm actually very excited for that film, which is pretty good considering the fact I didn't love Trainwreck. I thought Trainwreck like flew in the face of all of Amy Schumer's comedy because it was so conventional. I think the only real twist is, is that she switched up the male and female uh, type of, you know, stereotypes to some degree, kind of. Uh, but I'm hoping that she's a little bit more, um, you know, uh, proactive with this movie because that's what made her famous in the first place. All right, so after that weekend, Baywatch. We know Dwayne Johnson can lift weights. We know he can eat like a ridiculous amount of carbs. We know he can Instagram, but can he produce? That's the big test here. So far, I've had mixed feelings about how he's promoted the film on his social media, but Zac Efron and Dwayne Johnson in a comedy? That sounds pretty good to me. Although I liked Neighbors too, and that didn't do particularly well at the box office. So I wouldn't say that's a sure bet. Uh, then he's going to uh, face off the same weekend against a slew of sequels. In fact, this weekend is so crowded, I wouldn't be surprised if one or two of these movies moves. Uh, one is going to be Annabelle 2, never count out James Wan. Uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Long Haul. They're still making that? Uh, it's just really a necessity before it probably has a very lucrative life on streaming. And then The Nut Job 2, which you might be like, what? That's definitely going to move. But Jackie Chan provides one of the voices, uh, and so I wouldn't underestimate that film. And also, there's so much animation coming down the pipeline for the rest of the summer, I don't think that movie can afford to move. Uh, but finishing out the month, oh my goodness, get this. All right, so... There's a little movie called Life, and I was like, what's this movie? So I looked it up, and they're like, Grace, it stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Ryan Reynolds, and Rebecca Ferguson. I was like, oh my God. And they're like, it gets better. They're going to be in space on Mars where they discover life, and that's why it's called life. Now, you might be they're part of an international crew, and you're like, I'm sure your first reaction like mine is, well, my first reaction was, I need to see this movie, and my second reaction was, that doesn't seem very international to me. But the international members are not big stars uh, like those three. Although, I think it's arguable to some degree how big, how big stars those three are. Uh, I think they're all at least certainly not slam dunk stars. 
But the, um, let's see here. Uh, I think it might be The Martian meets The Arrival, and I'd be pretty excited about that. My only concern is that it's directed by Daniel Espinoza, and uh, I think that his track record is medium. All right, so then it faces off against Pirates of the Caribbean 5, a.k.a. Dead Men Tell No Tales. Finally, we get that title. Uh, I'm still excited for this. I know this franchise has really been around for a long time, and Johnny Depp ain't quite so fresh anymore, both personally and his uh, humor. But still, it has the Norwegian Contiki directors, which I think is a great choice. It has the return of Orlando Bloom, and Javier Bardem is the villain. And I just recently rewatched Skyfall, and he really knows how to chew up, chew, his, chew up the scenery in a good way. So I think that could be really good. All right, let's move to June now, where maybe or maybe not Captain Underpants from DreamWorks Animation will hit theaters. But I find that hilarious, because going up against it is Wonder Woman, and in her old costume, she too could be called Captain Underpants. But no, no, she has like kind of a skirt now. But anyway, the DCEU steps up to the plate once more. All eyes will be on this movie, not only to see if they can break their horrible Rotten Tomatoes uh, uh, track record, but also because of the current slate or the current renaissance of comic book movies, this is the first one led by a female superhero. So everyone's going to want to see how it does. Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot have a lot to prove. All right, so then the next weekend, they have no breathing room either because it's supposed to be The Mummy versus World War Z2, which is kind of the same movie, although World War Z2 is not making that release date. They haven't even settled on a director yet. They're just holding it in hopes that they're going to make it, but I think Brad Pitt, come on, let's be honest, without even a director in place yet, it's not going to happen. So right now, The Mummy has this weekend all to itself, and I'm also very excited for Universal to launch, well, to really launch, because Dracula Untold was supposed to be part of this, but methinks it won't be, unless uh, Luke Evans is a huge hit as Gaston in the Beauty and the Beast live action film, then maybe they'll try and resurrect it, uh, or awaken it from its slumber, because, you know, it's Dracula. But anyway, uh, this uh, this is Universal's bid to get into the franchise business. So they're going to do their monster movies, a-list talent. Uh, they're kicking it off with Tom Cruise, who they paid a lot of money to make this movie. Uh, so much so that, uh, as you might recall, we've discussed that Mission Impossible 6 is being held up because he says, I want the mummy money. And Paramount's like, yeah, we're not paying you that. <laughs> we don't need to convince you to make Mission Impossible movies. They're the backbone of your career, of your uh, whole career. But anyway, besides Tom Cruise, this movie also stars Jake Johnson, Courtney B. Vance from uh, the O.J. Simpson FX series as uh, Johnny Cochran, and then also Sophia Butella as the Mummy. So that sounds spectacular. Then the next weekend is pretty crowded. Cars three. I can't get behind the Cars franchise because every time I watch a movie, you know how they like to have a button to help the cars do things because they just have tires for hands? Every time I'm like, who makes the button? But anyway, Cars 3 inexplicably exists and will be released this weekend. But let's get to the good stuff that comes out. Kingsman, the Golden Circle. America! Yeah! So the Kingsmen have a horrible problem and they have to team up with the Statesmen, which are Americans, which will be played by Channing Tatum, Jeff Bridges, it's hard to get more American than those guys, and also Halle Berry and Julianne Moore. Uh, I think they could have done a little better with their female casting, but hopefully those two will prove me wrong. And then, of course, Colin Firth returns, and that's all I really or anyone cares about. So that should be spectacular. Then also, The Book of Henry comes out this weekend. That was supposed to be an awards competitor this year, but I guess they feel so good about it that they think it not only can be an awards competitor next year, you know, sometimes awards competitors come out in the summer to get a jump on uh, ch awards chatter, but they also apparently feel it's, it's a good summer movie. Now, this is from Colin Trevorrow. This is what he's decided to follow up Jurassic World with, so he must feel pretty good about it. It also has Jacob Tremblay in it, and then also the second most famous kid actor to working right now, Jaden Lieberher, which you wouldn't recognize his name, but you'd recognize him from movies like uh, Midnight Special. Uh, then the next weekend, you know, after Bad Moms dominated the box office summer 2016, Rock That Body uh, is going to have to live up to that, right? And I think maybe it can. Now, this is uh, The Hangover with Women, and Scarlett Johansson leads up the cast. Uh, she might be cameoing in Spider-Man Homecoming, but she's just going to try and keep making Marvel look bad if she makes money for other people while they refuse to give her a Black Widow movie. But anyway, she's going to star in this, uh, and it's also going to have a bunch of female comedians who are like, hey, 
They're going to hold out Scarlett Johansson in front of them to avoid a Ghostbusters-type scenario. But this has Kate McKinnon, speaking of Ghostbusters, Jillian Bell, Zoe Kravitz, Alania, Alana Glazer, and also Demi Moore just recently signed on for this. And what's happening? It's a bachelorette party where a male stripper turns up dead. So we'll see if it's actually Weekend at Bernie's. That, that would sound pretty bad. I hope it doesn't take that turn. Uh, they'd be like, Weekend at Bernie's meets Magic Mike. Twist, the dead body is hot. And I'm like, no, I don't know about that. Then the same weekend, Transformers The Last Night comes out, and I find that hilarious because it moved to this weekend to escape another group of women, Wonder Woman, uh, and it finds itself going up against Rock That Body. Uh, this is Robots in Disguise and King Arthur with Mark Wahlberg. It sounds crazy, but I think that the Transformers franchise has proven at this point it's too big to fail. Although, interestingly, its domestic numbers keep going down while its foreign box office keeps going up, so we're really just waiting for the foreign audiences to feel the same way about this franchise uh, that the domestic audiences do. So it's really just a ticking clock. We'll see. Although maybe the trailer will be amazing. I guess, you know, Optimus Prime with the sword could be really cool. We'll see. Then at the end of the month, a bunch of movies are trying to get in before the 4th of July weekend, which is booked, as you're about to see. But Despicable Me 3 comes out, and this is the big movie of the summer, and Pixar should be ashamed that they have only challenged this movie with Cars 3 for animation domination of summer 2017. Come on, put your better fighters in. But Despicable Me 3, speaking of fighters, is, you know, like the champ. Uh, then also that weekend, The House will come out with Amy Poehler and Will Ferrell, two comedians that are sometimes really funny and sometimes really unfunny. So we'll see which one they are this time. Uh, they're playing a couple that start an illegal casino in their basement because they accidentally spent their daughter's college fund. That sounds pretty good. I'd have to see a trailer. Then 4th of July weekend, Spider-Man Homecoming that's fantastic. And in the highest compliment that Hollywood can pay a movie, no one dares compete with it. At least for now. Some small movie might, some scrappy small movie might come in there to counter program. But right now, 4th of July weekend, all Spidey. Then the next weekend, not a lot of comp, you know, the one big movie's coming out, but they're giving a lot of wide, uh, they're giving a wide berth to Spider-Man Homecoming, which is a good sign. Uh, but then War of the Planet of the Apes comes out. Andy Serkis returns, and really the only ongoing role that he has. You would have thought more would have come of Andy Serkis, right? But it didn't happen. But anyway, he has this franchise still, and this time, in the human's corner, is Woody Harrelson, one of the hardest and most consistent working actors today, although he is uneven. We'll see if this franchise can up the ante, because I don't really know where it can go after the last film, which, let's be honest, wasn't quite as memorable as the first. Uh, I mean, you're not going to be able to beat Caesar speaking for the first time, right? Okay, so anyway, after that, speaking of fights, this is going to be one of the best fights of the summer. This is Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk versus Luca Besson's Valerian. And at Comic-Con, Besson threw down the gauntlet. He, like, slapped Christopher Nolan in the face with the white glove, right? He was like, Dunkirk's going down. And by the way, I'm not going to show any material to the public. <laughs> and you're like, wait, look, Bissau, you can't slap Christopher Nolan in the face with a white glove and then you have nothing to show for it, to, to back that up. But he's, he's insistent. He feels this is the second coming of the fifth element, which is a pretty strong pitch. However, did you see the Dunkirk trailer? It was amazing. That's also Christopher Nolan. You know, he's playing for Oscars this time. So this is basically his Schindler's List. And I'd also add that Valerian only has Dane DeHaan and Cara Delevingne, not exactly heavy hitters. Although Rihanna could be the movie's secret weapon. Then the month closes out with the Jumanji remake, The Rock again. He's doubling down this summer. And he will be starring here with Kevin Hart, Central Intelligence Reteam, uh, Jack Black, uh, Nick Jonas, and then also Karen Gillan just signed on for this. It seems like a solid hit, unless Disney really does release another live action fairy tale this weekend, as they're planning to do. They haven't revealed what it is yet, although to be honest, I don't really know what movies they would have ready in time for this release date. Mary Poppins Returns is a Christmas release, and so is The Nutcracker in the Four Realms, unless they're going to release that during the summer, which seems stupid. Uh, make, they could move Mary Poppins to this release date, but that also seems silly. Also, I think that Mary Poppins is a little weak right now until we see like Emily Blunt, Lin-Manuel Miranda, 
Miranda, who based on the lack of reaction to the, his being involved in the Little Mermaid headline, leads me to believe he might not be the box office <laughs> uh, boost that Disney uh, thinks he is. So I don't know what would go up, uh, you know, so I think uh, Mary Poppins and Jumanji would kind of cancel each other out. So A Wrinkle in Time, maybe, uh, which they're still casting, uh, the Splash remake, I don't know. So we'll see. Jumanji could have that weekend all to itself. Then August. As we've discussed, the first weekend of August is a time for experimentation. And Alien Covenant is kind of an experiment because the last, the last movie, Prometheus, was, the la was like a, the laughing stock of the sci-fi genre. But Ridley Scott is not deterred. He's going to try again. And he's going to put Michael Fassbender's David front and center, which is a very good idea. They feel so strongly about this movie, they shelved Neil Blomkamp's uh, other Alien film. So this one better deliver. So David is going to, basically the idea is that the Covenant ship comes across a planet where there's just one thing on it, Michael Fassbender's David. And Fassbender's promise this is a very scary movie, which I think sounds pretty cool. Michael Fassbender is going to try and be so scary that the characters in the movie run away from him in a straight line, <laughs> Prometheus joke, towards the aliens. We'll see. It's, it sounds pretty good. I, who's not going to see Alien Covenant, right? Uh, then opposite it is Blazing Samurai, which is kind of weird because that's like opening uh, Sausage Party and Suicide Squad the same weekend instead of a week apart as was what actually happened. But Blazing Samurai has to come out this weekend because another animated movie comes out the very next weekend and that's the Emoji Movie and there's no way I think that's going to actually happen. I think one of those movies will move or one will die. We'll see. Uh, but also that weekend, uh, the Chips movie comes out, which is an adaptation of the uh, TV show, which I don't really call anyone asking for. Michael Pena co-stars. Everyone likes Michael Pena, but nobody likes Dax Shepard except for Kristen Bell. Uh, but this is a passion project for Dax Shepard. He also is writing and directing, although I don't really know if Dax Shepard's passion is enough. Uh, then also that weekend, though, this is going to blow everything else away. So sorry, other movies. The Coldest City. Wait for it. Charlize Theron, James McAvoy, John Goodman, Sophia Boutella. It's a spy thriller. It is, uh, let's see here, produced by Charlize Theron and directed by the John Wick guys. Oh my God, it's amazing. Uh, it's going to be a big year of action for Charlize Theron because in April she's the villain in Fast 8. And after, of course, uh, Furiosa, everyone's going to be excited to see her here as well. I bet she's going to kill it and I, I bet Kevin Feige let's hope Kevin Feige doesn't regret not casting her as Captain Marvel then the next weekend we have the Flatliners sequel coming out because Kiefer Sutherland returns as the same character uh, also uh, that weekend though we have the hitman's bodyguard and this actually seems a little bit like the coldest city so we'll see if these two uh, can you know compete or if they'll cancel each other out or again one will die uh, the Hitman's Bodyguard st uh, guard stars, stars Ryan Reynolds as a, a bodyguard who is hired by a hitman turned informant, Samuel L. Jackson. And they have been at odds before because in the past, Samuel L. Jackson's hitman has tried to kill the people that Ryan Reynolds has been trying to protect. But now they must team up as Ryan Reynolds tries to get Samuel L. Jackson to The Hague to testify or some somehow bring down Gary Oldman's dictator. And on top of that, Selma Hayek also stars, as well as Elodie Young, a.k.a. Elektra. The only uh, possible hiccup here is that it's directed by the Expendables 3 director, and that's not exactly a bonus. I mean, I would take the John Wick directors over that guy any day. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Then the month closes out with... Uh, an oldie and a goodie because this is the kind of movie they make all the time and in fact Morgan Freeman usually makes this kind of movie and he's making this one here he co-stars as an ex-mob lawyer and witness protection who has struck up a friendship with an ex-FBI agent played by Tommy Lee Jones and wouldn't you know it their golf game is interrupted by a mob hit and you know what I totally see that at the end of August. So that's how summer 2017 looks so far. Do you agree? Does it look pretty good? Or are you not falling for that again? Write your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for going over this with me. And be sure to write down below what movies you're the most excited about here and which ones you think aren't going to cut it. Thanks for going over uh, the summer 2017 release schedule. And you can check out some more videos right now.